Good evening, everybody, and welcome all of you to this live program at Orthodox Principles. Today, our guest of honor is Dr. Sandeep Patel from PGI Chandigarh, India. Dr. Patel completed his post graduation at the PGI Chandigarh and subsequently joined as assistant professor in the Department of Orthopedics at PGI Chandigarh. Dr. Patel has several publications and book chapters to his credit. And if you've noticed, Dr. Patel has also lectured on our channel several times. You all very well engaging lectures. So today it's my great honor to bring back Dr. Sandeep Patel for this wonderful live program. Over to you, Sandeep. Thank you, Hitesh. Uh, it's always a pleasure to talk on your channel. You got a good crowd, good students up there. So the topic I have chosen today is exactly one which all orthopods needs to know. It's the old timer drug, the corticosteroids, the age old cortisone locally, how good is it? So it's gonna involve the present stand of steroid usage for local injections in orthopedic conditions with a fancying of a new orthobiologic treatments and other costlier therapies coming. However, the largest evidence and the oldest modality of injectable treatment has been steroid. So we need to review where it stands today. So the objectives of my talk is the status of steroid use in various orthopedic conditions. I won't be talking about the injections for spine. The special focus will be on the use for osteoarthritis knee the different preparations of steroid use for musculoskeletal use and broadly who to inject, how to inject and what to inject, which steroid to inject. So corticosteroid injections can be used as a three modality. One is to definitively treat a condition. That means we give the injection, the condition is fine. The second is to provide a pain-free window for rehabilitative therapy. And the third is to provide episodic pain and symptomatic relief. That is for the acute flares of any orthopedic conditions. So injections can be broadly intraarticular, that is within the joint, periarticular around the joint and within specific soft tissue structures. So definitive treatment, the role of steroid is one is decvariant stenosynovitis. It is to be noted that it provides the highest cure rate compared to other NSAID therapy, splinting or any other combination therapy. And most of the patients are symptom free after just a single injection. So this is a very good systematic review wherein they found 83% cure rate with injection alone. This was higher than any other therapeutic modality. And the next thing is, usually the decurrent stenosynovitis is a problem of pregnancy, postpartum breastfeeding because of holding the babies and all. And it's safe even in these conditions. The Cochrane database and the systematic review also said steroid to be a definitive indication. The second is a trochanteric bursitis, wherein a steroid anesthetic injection will offer rapid and prolonged improvement of pain and disability again after a single injection. Next is injection for pain control during rehabilitation. One is the subacromial pain. It's a definitive treatment, however, is the physical therapy to strengthen the rotator cuff. However, the shoulder pain usually prevents adequate rehabilitative exercises, even affecting the quality of daily life, including the sleep. So how to best control pain to allow for adequate rehabilitative physical therapy. So we have a wonderful article in the BMJ, which says that a combination of physical therapy along with corticosteroids injection gave the best pain relief at six weeks compared to physical therapy alone. But at a longer time, there was no difference. What it means is 
it acts as a bridge window you given a injection shot of steroid for the subacromial pain it will give a window for good rehabilitation to happen and you have a pain free interval at initially where in the physical therapy will eventually take on the next similar role is in tennis lateral and medial epicondylitis so corticosteroids in a short term less than 6 weeks it gives a pain free window wherein the physical therapy can take over but after 6 weeks there is no much role of a steroid injection and the same holds true for adhesive capsulitis faster pain relief and improved range of movement in a short term but longer term the therapy is definitely physical therapy next again for pain relief or symptomatic relief is a carpal tunnel syndrome short term improvement is there and also half of the patients will benefit and will not need a surgery but the only 50% rest of the 50% will eventually end up having a recurrence in the long term for which the definitive management is going to be a carpal tunnel release so ultrasound again is important because the main problem of a blind injection in carpal tunnel syndrome is the reason for failure to treatment and uh decrease responders if you want to increase the percentage of responders then you have to use an ultrasound guidance to improve your results so well now moving to the main part that is the arthritis so here the role of steroid is for the acute flares especially so in the inflammatory arthritis where we don't we know the problem is with the inflammation so be it juvenile or adult rheumatoid arthritis the spondyloarthropathies the crystal arthritis so for the acute flare steroid injection does wonder now coming to the next important as to the osteoarthritis knee so here starts the controversy so to understand this is what every orthopedician should know how the steroid has evolved and the story behind the evolution how the studies fared what were the controversies and all so what's the big deal about intraarticular corticosteroids so there are one group of people who says no never never use steroids because they say it causes joint degeneration they have termed something called corticosteroid arthropathy that the joint is going to be bad please don't use it and they question that it even gives a symptomatic relief and also they attribute it to a higher risk of infection and other complications so we have to see all this on the other hand we have a group of orthopedicians and the literature itself who says no there is an indication sometimes yes we have to use it for knee also and that indication is the acute flares with acute exacerbation of pain and joint effusion because it can relieve pain and have improved muscle functions and have actually little risk so first before going to the story the real contraindications are these you should never give an injection if you have a suspected infection of a joint any periarticular infections overall a bacteremia or a septic uh, picture or diabetes or other things which can predispose failure to respond previously is also a contraindication and bleeding disorders or anticoagulation is also a contraindication and complications let's talk about it infection it's one in 10000 means in 10000 injections it's one Uh, so this could be just by chance i mean it really doesn't have as i will talk later next direct injections into the tendon decrease the tensile strength and increase possibility of rupture again a very rare complication if you have a good injection technique this won't happen again next is the acute flare sometimes they say the post injection flare after giving injection it's not really because of the corticosteroid it's because of the preservative or the preparation per se but the real issue among the proponents and the controversy is does it cause intraarticular damage does it accelerate joint damage so 1950s there was a clinical observation a charco like arthropathy which they called as corticosteroid arthropathy following multiple injections these were the resultant of multiple experimental studies none other than from the dr mankin and his team most famous for the mankin scoring all those initial animal works they said decrease cartilage protein synthesis 
the Roly Moskowitz team, they said it degenerative changes in the chondrocytes because of steroids. And then Behrens and the team, they showed increased number of fissures in the articular cartilage. The proteoglycan content is decreased and the cartilage stiffness is gone. So here is one of the slides from their study where in the electron microscopic picture of the cartilage, in saline injection, the cartilage is normal smooth appearance, but you can see the obvious fissuring and its process of deteriorating. To an extent that in a classical article in JBJS in 1969, Sweetnam, they gave this strong statement that we now have evidence, both clinical and experimental, that apart from the well-recognized hazard of infection, so one is they pointed out infection, Intraarticular injection of corticosteroid certainly, if repeated, may be harmful. So the rabbit studies, the summary of the initial studies was this. That is the thinning of cartilage, the fissures and fibrillation, and degeneration cystic area. And most importantly, these effects were most marked in animals which received the greatest number of injections. That is, repeated injections was always a problem. However, 1983, in the CORE, another wonderful paper, the opinion by Gray and Gottlieb, they suggested something different. They said, clinical experience suggests that intraarticular steroid often help in acute exacerbations of knee arthritis associated with effusions. They pointed out the benefit of using them in an acute flare associated with effusion. They also challenged the concept of corticosteroid arthropathy. They said that it was based largely on a subprimate animal models, that is the lower animal models, and most of them were case reports. They were limited investigation into a primate model to actually prove there is something called corticosteroid arthropathy. It was followed by a good article in the ORS, Orthopedic Research Society Transactions, wherein they noted the other way weekly triamcillone injection actually reduced the osteophyte formation. Another study wherein an ACL transaction model wherein the osteoarthritis, when steroid was given, it actually reduced the cartilage fibrillation and osteophyte formation. Here they are saying it is reducing the progression of osteoarthritis. Another wonderful study in an ACL transaction dogs here they said that there was striking decrease in the number of and size of osteophytes. The cartilage erosions were less and decreased chondrocyte degradative enzymes. So here they are telling corticosteroid has got a role in osteoarthritis. They give a protective role by suppression of degradative enzymes. So a lot of confusion, right? What's the truth? Should we use this? Never or we should use them in selected patients. To understand that, let's see what the clinical studies say. In 1954, the clinical studies, 80 percentage of sustained relief, uh, systematic review and meta-analysis, clinically significant reduction in osteoarthritis knee pain one week after the injection, but it could only last for up to three to four weeks and unlikely to continue beyond that. The BMJ article, another meta-analysis, wherein evidence supports short-term, that is up to two weeks, improvement in symptom of osteoarthritis. And significant improvement was also shown wherein the methodological quality of studies were good. And they said a dose equivalent of 50 milligram prednisolone may be what is required to show the benefit. Let's see the Cochrane 2015. What, is, what does it say? It summarized and the evidence is as this. The dose equivalent across all trials was 50 milligram. The median number of injections they recommend is one. Benefits were moderate at one to two weeks. That is the best benefits were one to two weeks. As the time, with the time, at six weeks, it was small to moderate and there was literally no effect after six weeks. That is, it has got a short term role. Ravindra Bannuru's systematic review and meta-analysis, which forms the basis for the ORC guidelines. 
the largest meta analysis ever on osteoarthritis 129 trials 32000 participants and they said corticosteroids was good for knee related pain till 3 months in compared to placebo or other oral drugs and pharmacological agents so we know it is effective at short term but how about safety to the cartilage they were the animal studies what does the clinical study say do we have a study wherein we have actually injected the knees in humans followed them with a mri or something and shown something bad happens let's see with more research it it, it became more evident that steroid should not be used for osteoarthritis so a jama paper a randomized control trial wherein tramsulon injections were used in a two year randomized placebo controlled double blind trial wherein tramsulon in 70 and in the other arm it was saline every 12 weeks that is every 3 months for up to 2 years and they got annual mri done and womax scoring every 3 months and they said see what has to be noted is that this group received repeated steroid injection so 2 years of intraarticular steroid compared with saline it actually resulted in greater cartilage volume loss and no difference in knee pain compared to a saline. So their findings suggest that it is not to be used in symptomatic knee osteoarthritis. Repeated steroid injection is not good. So where do we stand now? What is the scope of steroids in early osteoarthritis knee? What does the recommendation say? So we have the clinical evidence. Let's see about the recommendations. The ACR 2012 recommendations does support the use of steroid injections when they don't have a response to other oral medications. And we can see intraarticular corticosteroids wherein they do recommend it. The ORC guidelines 2014, appropriate and the quality of evidence is good. Short term effects, it is to be noted. And the recommendation is for the acute flares in osteoarthritis. The ORC guidelines, you can again see the corticosteroids over here, wherein they do recommend it. The NICE guidelines, again, intraarticular corticosteroid injections should be considered as an adjunct to core treatment to relief of moderate to severe pain in people with osteoarthritis. They even went in and said, do not offer intraarticular Hyaluron. So steroid evidence was there and all the guidelines have actually recommended that. The AAOS 2013, however, it is an inconclusive one. So for all knee arthritis, the indications for steroids use are, one is acute knee pain. That is the acute flares in osteoarthritis and definitely for inflammatory arthritis, wherein the role, the mechanism of action is completely different where we have to address the inflammation. So this is a good cartoon which I like. When you give an injection to the patient, you have to tell that is for the acute flare, the core treatment should begin. I hope it worked for much longer, but once it's gone, it's going to come back again, the inflammation and the pain will always follow. So for the acute flares, it should be used. Now that we know, the next question is, which steroids? The two most commonly used as a canalog, that's a triamcillone or the depomedrol, that is a methylprednisolone. So which one should we use actually? So, methylprednisolone and triamcillone are ester preparations which are highly insoluble in water compared to the other variants which are soluble. So, overall slower release and comparatively a longer duration of action. That longer means two to three weeks. So, if you see the available doses for the knee, methylprednisolone is 80 mg and triamcillone is 40 mg. We got two types of triamcillone again. Triamcillone acetonide and triamcillone hexacetonide. So which one should we use? So this is a good study wherein they used both to compare triamcillone and methylprednisolone for short term effectiveness. And they noted a longer duration with methylprednisolone. Another study in the Journal of Rheumatology, both are equally effective. There's no difference. Another study from PGH Chandigarh from the rheumatology team, in fact, they said no difference and both are equally effective. So 
The next important question we orthopedicians want to know is the prosthetic joint infection, prosthetic joint replacements after intraarticular steroid. Is there an increased complication rate? This is exactly what we all uh, keep asking. So the answer for this is, it's a very good paper wherein they noted the intraarticular steroids prior to total joint replacement and they concluded that it is safe. In fact, the documented symptomatic benefits the benefits experienced by patients outweigh the small risk of immediate complication and the large majority study shows it confers no increased joint sepsis risk. But however, most of the studies were level 2. Another study from the Journal of Arthroplasty, they said no relationship between the timing and number of injections with respect to complication, infection or poor outcomes after the TKR. Another article which again says there is no significant difference between it and association. So, however, currently there is insufficient evidence to conclude that intraarticular corticosteroid injection increases the rate of infection. There is only one paper which in a journal of arthroplasty which has said there is an increased risk of prosthetic joint infection. And again, it's only if it is within three months. They have seen the timing. So, if you have given an injection, the message is don't do it within next three months. So I have showed you a lot of papers. So the minimum cutoff is if you're given a steroid injection, wait. If you want to do a replacement, at least let three months be over. And the second message is don't take from my talk that we can give in multiple injections. That's wrong. The indication is for an acute flare. If you rightly select the inj injection, one or two shots in a lifespan whenever they get that flare it's not a bad idea the whole habit of just the patient coming every time every time giving steroid that is bad so the take home message my dear friends there is a definitive role for use of steroids in arthritic knee and that is acute knee pain bar effusion the wet knee the effect is short-term effect and the longer definitive treatment needs to be carried Multiple injection, yes, it causes cartilage damage and be careful and do not use for every other patient. So the question, age-old cortisone locally, how good is it? Old is gold, it does have a role. Thank you. Thank you, Sandeep, for another brilliant presentation of yours. Uh, just a few questions. Yeah. Sandeep, you mentioned about tendinopathy. Yeah, we are using corticosteroids. And do you personally prefer using corticosteroids for Achilles tendinitis or weaker veins? Because I generally avoid that because my concern is always the risk of tendon rupture. I've seen a lot of tendon ruptures, so I somehow I convince them against getting an injection around a tendon. No, you're true. It's a very valid question. So that's why again I included the first. See, if you had seen, I never mentioned ten, uh, Achilles tendinitis in this yeah. one. These are the indications which are actually there in literature with strong evidence. And for decoherence, I strongly believe yes. And again, the the most important is it, it should be ultrasound guided, you know, because intratendinous, yes, it, it does do a rupture. But the decoherence tenosynovate is the whole pathology is in the tenosynovite, is the tendon sheath. So if it is a, if it is given properly, and in fact, it is the gold standard that has got the best uh, cure results, right? And again, so, so one indication is decoherence. Where it has a role, trochanteric bursitis. Again, ultrasound for decoherence. Yes, yes, yes. Ultrasound for decoherence. Anything, any injections actually, it should be given under ultrasound guidance. Again, be it shoulder also. Yeah, Every shoulder. I mean, I'm sure uh, we are fairly. Uh, shoulder. Now the evidence is there. Uh, yeah. I, I shouldn't, but then there are one of uh, some of my relatives themselves whom I had to give uh, elderly seventy years and all. It, it does good. Again, no, shoulder the, works, but. My question is, how many people actually do an ultrasound guided injection for weaker waves? Yeah. You look at practice. Exactly. You practice, say you take a survey of, say, 100 surgeons who do uh, injection. How, how many people do you think would really do an ultrasound for hey, Then again, uh, there is again one more thing. Uh, if you have that expertise, if you do it, they do, you actually get the feel of when you are pricking the tendon itself. So you just need to go in. The moment the sheath is gone, you have to inject it comes with skills so uh, so for every, every postgraduate out there who's who listens to the talk it has a role but and it definitely requires some sort of skills 
so i think again in the foreign training and all frcs ultrasound is a part of the training it's exactly. it's time that we also start no, now uh, i agree for shoulder surgeons ultrasound is part of practice yes. that is almost accepted you have an ultrasound in the outpatient clinic right exactly okay so we are fairly okay with that the other question is uh, regarding your favorite substance prp how does prp versus corticosteroids fare with respect to osteoarthritis yes uh so now uh, the answer is everyone keeps popping up the same question prp is steroid plus halron how does it sound <laughs> okay interesting because i'll tell you uh the so prp how long does the effect last I yes mean, so the anti inflammatory effect so if you want very quick quick uh, quick result if it's a swollen joint the wet joint steroid will do good because there it will get it down so prp the major action is again anti inflammatory as we are discussed in our my previous talk also so definitely that anti inflammatory property of steroid so similarly prp also has it but it won't give you effect within a week or something it will give you we for the prp action to happen it will take a mean of 3 weeks it's the 17 to 21st day where we start getting the benefit but the real advantage comes in from there the benefit keeps increasing you saw steroid it had the best effect at one week then it keeps coming down right the prp the effect starts to come at third week and it just keeps increasing till the six months and then it plateaus till the one year and then it starts waning off waning off so prp has got a much sustained uh, sustained effect which will uh, large even better the studies do say it has got a longer lasting compared to halron also and uh, again if you uh, if you compare halron versus prp then definitely i would favor prp one most important reason is which we as clinic uh, researchers see is most of the halron studies are always uh, uh, funded studies you know there has been a commercial interest but all the good quality uh, prp studies for osteoarthritis knee have, uh, have been their lab prepared prp where in what i want to uh, uh, bring a point is they were never really commercially funded studies to begin with so there was never really that angle of interest to come up with okay thank you sandeep for that and what about inflammatory arthritis i mean there is no doubt that it yeah. works right so yes, there is no indication doubt that there are no controversies for example if there, there is only the contraindication see when the inflammatory arthritis that contraindication chart is important they shouldn't be having sepsis they shouldn't be having infection so it's always when you have that inflamed joint don't give them injection that day so what happens is first day when they come you have to aspirate them send it for your analysis you have to rule out culture because it is that in inflamed uh, effuse joint right so aspirate send it for your investigations the counts the uh, gram staining the uh, other uh, cell analysis and then call them after one or two days and that time when you know it is not infection give them an uh, steroid shot and always uh, ask them about the diabetes status if the diabetes is there uncontrolled diabetes uh, please do not inject into the knees and one more thing why i the steroid see uh, as you rightly said i am a prp fan everything but then in my practice i i do give prp i do give halron i do give steroid all the three have their own role right so and in fact steroid is such a wonderful drug you have a patient who comes with you i mean i have discussed with a lot of people they say you give them steroid once that patient is yours for your lifetime mm -hmm. <laughs> but then uh, we should understand so that that practice of giving repeated injections is bad but again osteoarthritis no it has got its flair if you are if see if you have your osteoarthritic patient to whom you are following up once in his once in a year he has that flare where it is very bad at that time if you give him it it will work and then you take him through an exercise therapy and then the next uh, injection is to tell you come to me after two or three months then we think about a uh, have visco supplement or a prp based on his knee arthritic grade so this is comprehensive Uh, care for them obviously the most important thing being lifestyle modification a weight loss and the core strengthening thank the cog wheel the typical cog wheel treatment for osteoarthritis thank you sandeep i think that's all the questions that we have for this session so it's a fantastic lecture like as usual i mean i really look forward for another one later on thank you yeah. so much for joining thank you